question is, do you have to say amen after you pray a prayer in order to get that prayer answered? I love this question. Uh, very interesting question, actually. In short, no, you don't have to say amen, but you do need an amen in order for your prayers to get answered. So you'll need to hear the, the, the full answer here to understand what's going on and, and the key to having an, an effectual prayer. So first, to understand whether we must have an amen, let's look at what the word means. It's a Hebrew word, amen. It means like verily, truly, or so be it. And it's an interesting word because it's pretty much the same word in Hebrew, and then the, it gets trans, transferred into Greek, and it's still amen. And then it's in English. We still say amen. So sort of the same word used in three different languages over millennia. So interesting. Uh, we can go back to the Old Testament and see amen being used even there. So, for example, Numbers chapter 5, there's this curse where um, it's, if a husband suspected the wife was cheating on him, she could go through a test to prove that she was innocent. And as part of that, she would have to take an oath. And here's what the verse says, verse 19 of chapter 5 of, of the book of Numbers. And the priest shall put her under an oath. Then the woman shall say, Amen, so be it. Now, in, in the Hebrew, it's actually would be Amen, Amen, two Amens, but the translators made one of the, the amens, so be it, so that you have a better understanding of what's being said here. But the significance in the Bible, when you say something twice, that means it's definitive, it's a done deal, it's solid. Like, So it, it's supposed to be a big deal. So uh, amen, amen. It's, you know, it is going to be so. Or definitely may it be so. Now we see amen being used a lot in Deuteronomy 20, 27. This is where the Hebrews stood on two different mountains, the, the Mount of Blessing and then the Mount of Curses. And um, after the reading of each of the blessings and cursing, uh, curses, they would uh, say amen, you know, so be it. Jump forward to the New Testament. Jesus starts almost every sentence. And notice that he starts the sentences with amen. So, for example, Matthew 5, 18, he says, for truly, th that word truly, there's amen. He says, for truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of the pen, uh, will by any means disappear from the law. Now, another famous time where Jesus says, verily, truly, uh, or amen, is Luke 23, 43, for example. He says, and, and Jesus said unto him, talking about the man on the cross, verily, I say unto you, today you shall be with me in paradise. So he starts it off with saying, amen, I say unto you today, you'll be with me in paradise. So does so why does everybody say amen at the end of their prayers? Like, why don't we even, why don't we start our sentences with amen? So if we look at Matthew 6, chapter 9, or sorry, Matthew 6, verse 9, this is where we have Jesus giving the Lord's prayer. And he, you know, gives us all the stuff, you know, uh, he says, in this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, goes on and on. And then verse 13, it says, and do not lead us into temptation, but lead, but deliver us from evil or from the evil one, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, this is from the New King James Version. If you look at a lot of other versions, uh, there's some things that are missing. And so there's actually a lot of scholarly debate about whether Jesus even said amen at the end of this prayer. Because I know Jesus says amen all the time, but he usually says it at the beginning of a sentence. Um, the version of the Lord's Prayer of Luke 11, um, in lots of modern translations, translations leaves out amen. In fact, they leave out a lot of that last sentence. So here's Matthew 13 from the NIV. It says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Period. So none is like, you know, for thine is the kingdom and the glory and power. That's not in a lot of more modern translations. So which version is right? Well, regardless, uh, uh, you know, amen becomes a very popular way of ending prayers for Christians, especially even like in the uh, very early church times, many Christians start ending their prayers with amen, uh, which suggests to me that uh, it was very likely that the true original transcript of Jesus giving the Lord's Prayer did end with amen. To me, I think that's good proof that a lot of Christians start using amen 
um, as a result of it, uh, probably as a result of this. Um, but it is ironic that we just sort of automatically start dropping this word at the end of our prayers because Jesus uh, not only started his sentences with amens, then and end usually then with it, but also just before he gives the Lord's Prayer, this is how Jesus starts it. He says, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do for they think that they will be heard for many words therefore do not be like them for your brother your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him so prayer isn't supposed to be this thing where you just say these magical words you say the right words and then things will happen no jesus wants prayer to be something of the heart even the lord's prayer is a guide but that's not something that we should just say word for word but you know, let it be illustrative of the things that should come out of your heart that you praise God for and ask of him. Uh, and an important thing that is, is said there is God already knows what we want. And sometimes we don't even know how to pray for the right thing or even put into the right words what we want. And God has the solution for that. Romans 8, 26, it says, the spirit also helps in our weakness for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Uh, and, and we have this amazing prayer, too, about how, like, in Daniel chapter 9, verse 20, uh, Daniel's praying this amazing prayer um, for God, for forgiveness of, his, of him and his people, for Israel. And then Gabriel shows up, and he says, well, or, or, uh, yeah, he it says, well, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me, and he informed me, Oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. At the beginning of your supplications, the command went out, and I have come to tell you. Uh, in fact, I, I think this is sort of fulfillment of this verse that Jesus said, you'll even before uh, you ask, it shall come to pass. Uh, now, here's the key of prayer. Here's why it's effectual, and this is where amen comes in. Jesus is, in fact, the amen. Prayer is powerful not because of what you say, but because of who you know. John the Revelator, uh, he hears the following words in Revelation 3.14. It says, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God. So it's referring to Jesus, and he's called the Amen. And here's an extremely important verse uh, for all of this that we're talking about. 2 Corinthians 1, starting at verse 18, Paul says, But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among us, uh, preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, Timothy was not yes and no but in him it has always been yes for no matter how many promises god has made they are yes in christ uh, yes in christ and so through him the amen is spoken by us to the glory of god so did he catch that it is through christ that the amen is spoken by us to the glory of god christ is the amen and he is the one that gives power to our prayers. It is through him and his, his merits, his, his connection to God, his righteousness, his glory, his love, his power that our prayers get answered and are, um, are given effect. So it's not the magic words. It's our relationship with him, our connection with him that will will we'll add that amen to our prayers that makes them get answered. So so hope that is helpful for anybody who's struggling with prayer and, and wanting to understand it better. Tina, anything you would like to add to that? Yeah, really quick. Uh, two, two quick things. So absolutely, yes, Jesus is the amen. <laughs> and so that's really what makes it important. And I was just going to add to that. A lot of times people say, oh, you have to say in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Okay, which it's true. I mean, it's it's not a wrong thing to say. Jesus tells us in John 14, 14, um, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So 
it's good to say in his name, but you know, again, it's, it's not just the magic word in Jesus name. It's, um, you know, that the name has power as you believe and have faith in Christ that he will do that. He does hear that he is God, mm -hmm. um, you know, that we must come to God believing that he is, and that he is, uh, a God who, um, um, but, you know, rewards those who seek him. And so um, also I was just going to say, um, as far as, you know, do we have to say amen? Absolutely not. You see this in Matthew 14, 30, when um, Peter's walking on water and he starts thinking his, his prayer was three words, Lord, save me. And Jesus saved him. So again, it, it wasn't a matter of, oh, he didn't have to say in Jesus name, amen. And it was, yeah. you know, it was from the heart and it, he meant it. And so mm -hmm. God, you know, he's going to respect a prayer that we mean that is, you know, either for our good or the good of others. And if we pray in accordance to God's will, you know, he, we, he, we exactly. mean it. Um, and, you know, and we're, we're trying to come into harmony with God's will. And again, that goes back to, you know, first John five fourteen. you know, if we ask anything according to his will here, we, we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask. We know that we have the petition that we've inquired of him. And so, um, it's not just saying, Lord, thy will be done because that doesn't really mean anything unless, you know, it's coming from our heart. Like Jesus prayed, not as I will, but thy will be done. I will go to the cross if that is what you want me to do, Father. And he showed his faith by action. So, um, yeah, hundred percent. Um, it's not just about magical words. Cause I can't help but think of also that story in the book of Acts where some people start hearing Peter, you know, doing miracles and casting out demons in the name of Jesus. And they start saying, in the name of Jesus, but the demons don't you know, obey them. And they're like, why not? We use the magic word. But it had nothing to do with the word. It had to do with, you know, the, about like the seven sons of Sceva. Yeah, the seven sons Peter, of I know, Paul, I know, but who are you? Or who Jesus, you? I know, but who are you guys? Exactly. So we need to, yeah, exactly. It's not about just magical words because, God, God's much more than just, you know, a, a magic spell. God is a real living God. He's a person who wants to be connected to you. And just like you're saying, sometimes we don't even know what to say, but the Holy Spirit gives, sends up a prayer that we don't even know where we, we can, we can't even put into words because, but God knows how to um, answer the right way. So. Mm -hmm.